another video brought to you by Kendall Works. All right, Kendall here. So uh, the last portion of the video that we left off on, uh, portion two, on this NAS device recovery process was basically we were puttied into the device using SSH. And as you can tell on the screen here, we were puttied into the device. Now, um, with that, we were not able to view this flash drive that you can see down here. It just wouldn't read it. It didn't see it in Device Manager at all. It was basically just junk for whatever reason. All right, so what I did is I went out and I have um, bought a mail-to-mail -mail adapter. So basically, the first thing you're going to want to do, if you don't have one already, is buy a USB to IDE or SATA cable adapter. That's what this is here. And then the second portion is you're going to want to buy a mail-to-mail -mail connector. So basically, the DOM, the disk on module, which is this right here, it has a female adapter on it. And then um, all the connectors on this adapter are all female as well. And with that, what you're going to need to do is get a 44 pin male adapter and that'll interface the DOM device to your adapter. Okay, and once you've done that, you can plug it in and as you can tell here, it gives you an indicator of, hey, it sees USB power basically and then we also um, have a green light for IDE and it's busy letting you know, hey, it's trying to read your data. So once you've gone out and done that, you'll plug it into your NAS device and then obviously SSH into it, and this is where you're at today. So the first thing that we tried earlier, like I said, was the um, lift SCSI command, and it didn't see the device before, so let's see if it sees it now. Okay, so there it is. It's dev SDB is this device here with the flash, and it's not labeled with anything. The USB flash drive that you're seeing up here, that's what's actually running the operating system of Linux right now that we did in the earlier videos, okay? So the next thing what we're going to want to do is let's see, now that we can see the actual device, it does see if there's something attached to the system. Let's see if we can actually read the data off of it. So we're going to do an F disk minus L. Okay, so this is not a good sign. As you can tell, the only thing it can see is the SDA1 device, which again is this USB flash drive up here. All right, so to further go into that, we could try telling it to look for that specific drive up here, which is SDB. But when you is issue the fdisk minus L command, it, it just will basically spit out any device it can see with a file system on it. But I'll do it just for this sake, right? Make sure I'm double checking and trying everything here. So we know that, okay, there's no file system on it. We can't find it. but you know, who, who cares? Let's just try and mount this device. So I created a test folder. Here, I'll actually uh, list that so you guys can see it. So I have this test folder here that I created. So I'm going to try and mount it to that test folder. So I'm going to do a mount command. I'm going to do the device path, which is S dev sdb, and then test, because that's the folder I want to try and mount it to. And it's going to tell you, okay, we can't read the super block, which kind of gives me the same um, thing that I was expecting, which is, you know, the device hardware is actually okay, but the data is bad on it. Now, sometimes you can fix this. If the super block is saved somewhere on the device that we can read, you can kind of recover the device. So let's try and see if we can do that. So um, you can use this dump file system. Um, we'll do dev. It's a SDB. And then we'll try and grab the super block. Okay. Couldn't find valid file system super block. So I'm getting the same thing. So we're not going to be able to recover this device at all. Um, basically, we're going to have to format it and then put a new OS or operating system or firmware, whatever Thekus puts on it by default. So that's a bummer, but at least I was able to prove, you know, you can load via USB on this device. You can get Linux running on this and then you can troubleshoot your system. You don't have to send it out for repair to see what's wrong with your system here. And as I suspected all along, I thought there was something wrong with the flash drive. I really wasn't thinking there was anything wrong with the motherboard because obviously everything else works on the system. So um, maybe what I'll do is I'll create a part four on actually the steps involved in wiping the device, this little flash drive here and uh, how I'm actually going to go about getting an operating system on that. Uh, just depends how many people really want that, I guess, because that's going to be a lengthy video, um, just to, because there's a lot of steps involved in order to get an operating system back on it. 
but um, yeah, it looks like at least we diagnosed the problem. We know what's wrong with it. So I'm going to hit up Ficus. Uh, I'm hoping maybe they'll be able to either get me another DOM device that has the operating system already on it. And all I have to do is plug it in or um, they're willing to work with me on getting their uh, proprietary operating system back on this DOM after I wipe it. So um, as usual, I appreciate you guys for watching. Thanks.